What's up YouTube? The Education 10 here coming at you guys with another video. So, the first round of the NFL draft of 2018 has come and gone. A lot of surprises, a couple of shockers. I want to dive right into the particularly the two local teams here in New York, the Jets and the Giants. And, of course, the number one pick with the Cleveland Browns. So, after all of the hype, after all the speculation, the number one pick in the draft was Baker Mayfield. Very curious about that decision. Everybody thought Sam Darnold was going to be the top guy. Everybody thought he was going to be number one. Maybe Baker Mayfield would slip a little bit down. But the Cleveland Browns, they wanted Baker Mayfield. They went with their guy. I'm curious how this is going to work out for them. Uh, not a very, not really a very big guy. Only six feet tall. Not sure how he will quite translate into the NFL. You know, he has... He's had some off-the-field issues. He's He's got a certain demeanor about him that maybe kind of rubs off on people the wrong way. But um, I'm curious to see where, you know, if Baker Mayfield will make it. Will he be the guy that can finally carry a Cleveland Browns team that's had one win in three years, or however many years it is, uh, and bring the Browns back to prominence once again? Will be very interesting to see. Uh, Cleveland Browns have been searching for a quarterback. They've been searching for just a winner for three years. Trust me, I know what it's like, Cleveland Browns fans. We have a team down in New York that's had to go through the same bit of losing and struggles and you know failed expectations for years. And that's the Jets, and I'm going to get to them in a sec. You know, the Browns made a couple of nice signings this offseason. You're you know, already signing Jarvis Landry, getting Carlos Hyde. Got a couple of pieces on their offense, and then you have Darnold now, and then you then they drafted a Denzel Ward at number four. So, you know, now you have Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley running things, so I'm curious to see where this Browns team will be heading now. Obviously, Mayfield will take a seat behind Tyrod Taylor, another piece that the Browns signed for for a bit until he's ready, and I'm curious to see where Cleveland will go now. Having, you know, having Tyrod Taylor, maybe they win a few games with him, and obviously this will be experience for Baker Mayfield to learn from a veteran before throwing him in there. And I feel that's something of the past. A lot of teams have gone away from doing with letting the veteran guy show the young up and comer. This is how you have to be in the before you can make in the NFL. This is, you know, just learn from a veteran guy. Get to sit behind him for a bit. We haven't had many great quarterbacks that have had that opportunity to sit behind a star or veteran quarterback like this and then just take over the team eventually down the stretch. The last great one that ever did that was Aaron Rodgers. He sat behind Brett Favre. After, what, about two years he sat behind Favre and then Rodgers took over? And look at him now. Got a Super Bowl and has become by far one of the most clutch quarterbacks in the NFL. So... We'll see where Baker Mayfield can take this. Uh, some folks are comparing him to that of Drew Brees. Says he's a very accurate passer. Some folks compare him a little bit to Russell Wilson. I don't know. I don't know what Baker Mayfield could become in the NFL. I'm, I'm hoping that, look, like every draftee, I hope he has a great career. And we'll see where this takes him. We will see where Cleveland will go. After all, there's no place for them to go except up. We'll see how far up they go. Which now brings me to the number two pick in the draft, and that was Saquon Barkley. Another piece I'm surprised. Again, another surprise uh, to go that early in the draft. I thought, again, you figure maybe the Browns were going to take him. Maybe at one could have maybe taken him down the list. It was a lot of questions. The fact the Giants took Barkley was interesting. Yes, the Giants did 
try to piece up their offensive line a little bit. Yes, they signed Nate Solder. Yes, they did. But still, do they have enough of an offensive line that Saquon Barkley can really explode down the field and really showcase his running ability? Now, I know the Giants have not had a star running back in years. Go back to the year of Tiki Barber. That was the last real star running back the Giants ever had. I'm not saying Ahmad Bradshaw and Brandon Jacobs were not quite those stars, but they were not like the star of that football team. It was always, you know, Jacobs could be there for short yardage, and then you had Bradshaw who can take over into the game, and, you know, things like that. The Giants had that earth, wind, and fire combination from from their years winning Super Bowl Forty Two. Okay, that was different back then. Now you bring in Saquon Barkley. Again, I think he's a very a great larger-than-life player. I think he's one of the most mature players that's ready for the NFL. I get it. Now, it's good that they're going to at least have Eli to stick around to, to see what this kid can really do. But I am very curious. The Giants did not go after a quarterback because Eli Manning is not going to be there for the next 10 years. Eli Manning's already at the final, like the latter end of his career. And the Giants are going to need a quarterback that can carry this team. And this was a very, very deep quarterback draft this year. This was a very deep draft of great, uh, potential great quarterbacks could have, could have landed somewhere. So for the Giants getting Saquon Barkley, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised. I'm a little surprised they took a running back at two when a quarterback could have fallen right into their lap. We'll see where this. Uh, we'll see where the Giants are going to go from here. Uh, obviously, Des Bryant was cut by the Cowboys. Could the Giants be looking to make a move at Des Bryant? Well, could be interesting pairing him with Odell Beckham. That could be a very interesting <clears throat> twist, but. Right now, the attention is Saquon Barkley and where he will fit into this Giants offense. There's no doubt he's a talented running back. I'm not doubting that in the slightest. But do the Giants have enough of an O-line that can prevent Barkley, that can actually allow Barkley to showcase his playmaking abilities? Can they keep him? Can Barkley be that guy that can that can be that game changer at running back as well as you know, catch the football on the front, can he block? That's something we need, that's something I'm waiting to find out. Only time will tell. But, for a young kid who went to Penn State, a young kid from the Bronx, Saquon, welcome home. Which now brings me to the number three pick in the draft. Again, the Jets had to make an impact move. They had to make this move that was going to be a piece that the Jets could remember for the next 10 to 15 years. Their opportunity finally came. They traded up during the offseason to go to the third pick in the draft. They were number six originally. They went with Sam Darnold, a guy that Everybody thought was going to be the number one pick. The Jets didn't even think they would get him at three. But the Jets may have made one of the biggest steals in the draft with Sam Darnold. Just kind of listening to him and just kind of seeing what, you know, just kind of getting the impression of him. There is something different about Sam Darnold that's different from any other quarterback the Jets have had. And that's saying something. The Jets have struggled to find a quarterback for over 40 years. Joe Namath was the the last great Jet quarterback, really, that defined what a quarterback was. Won a Super Bowl. Wasn't afraid to guarantee it. You know, he just had that swagger for New York. Not bad for a guy from Pittsburgh. I'll give him that. Now the Jets had some okay success at quarterback after him. Like, yeah, you had Vinny Testaverde, you had Richard Todd, and then you had, and obviously Chad Pennington, yes. But they weren't those guys that, hey, I wanted, you know, I could commit 10 to 10 to 15 years at that position with these guys. They got hurt. 
you know, they weren't always consistent all the time. Yeah, they got him to playoffs. But there's something different with Sam Darnold that makes him a little different from what Mark Sanchez was. It makes him different from what Pennington was. It makes him different from what Testaverde was. First of all, Darnold is a young kid, only 20 years old. So he has a tremendous amount of time ahead of him to really grow and become the great quarterback that many expect him to be. He also has a very calm presence about him. Very calm presence for a young kid. And I know it's too quick to judge, I mean... But he's willing to learn, and that's the type of player that you want to have on your team. You want to have a guy that is ready to sit back, he's ready to learn from a veteran, and when his time comes, he's ready to lead. Is Sam Darnold finally the piece the Jets have been looking for? Is he the guy that this team could finally capture the Vince Lombardi trophy after almost 50 years? Is this the guy that can lead this Jet team for the next 10 to 15 years? Personally for me, from listening to him and just kind of from, from looking at him, I think he could be. Obviously, yes, he does. He has made turnovers in the past. He's made some turnovers. He, he has some trouble with turning over the football, but he wants to correct that mistake. The first thing I think that can define a great NFL player, it doesn't always mean you have to play with a chip on your shoulder. And prove the doubters wrong. Sometimes the key is humbleness. Admitting, hey, I was this player in college. I made turnovers. I want to fix those turnovers. I want to get better at what I'm doing. To be humble about it. And to admitting to want to get better at it. That's one of the first good signs you want in a new player. And, and particularly... In a guy that wants to make it in the NFL. And he's going to have a good crew around him, Sam Darnold. He's going to have... I think you really couldn't have asked for a better place to be right now than the Jets. Todd Bowles. Mike McCagnan. you got a good defense around him. And the Jets, you know, really quietly got a good supporting cast around him. That's a very good thing for Darnold to learn from, and eventually he'll get accustomed into this Jet offense because of it. You get Quincy Inunua coming back, a big, you know, he was he was really emerging as a as a star on this Jet team for there was a wide receiver and a tight end, pretty much can play a combination threat. Robbie Anderson, you're going to see it. We'll see about Robbie Anderson. He had some off the field issues this past off season. Curious where that will go. The Jets got Terrell Pryor, a good deep threat wide receiver that they've been missing for a while. Isaiah Crowell has been signed to their running back position. Having him and Bilal Powell, that's a pretty nice combo. Along with Elijah McGuire, too. And then the Jets have Chad Hansen, somebody that they're going to develop into another quarter, you know, another wide receiver in, in, in the in, could be on the rise. And then, of course... Jets are bringing back Jermaine Curse, another good threat. So the Jets have some offensive weapons now that Sam Darnold can get the football to. The Jets had the wide receiving talent. They had the guys who can run the football, but they never had the quarterback that could throw the ball to them. And for the Jets, Darnold could be that piece. He could be that guy. And again... The great thing with Darnold now is you don't have to rush him out there. He's going to sit behind two veteran quarterbacks in the process right now. You have Josh McCown. You have Teddy Bridgewater signed to a year. Yes, the Jets are caring about five quarterbacks. and Probably two of them will be gone. That probably will be Hackenberg and Bryce Petty. But for Sam Darnold, you have a golden chance in front of him. Sitting behind a veteran like McCown, you have Bridgewater as, as backup there and 
these are two guys that Darnold is going to not only get a great wealth of experience from, but he might possibly have the best cast to turn him into a great NFL quarterback. Maybe to, could he become one of the best of all time? It's too early to say. But I think if any team made the steal of this draft, it's the Jets. The fact that nobody took Darnold in the, by the third pick until the Jets came. Could be one of the biggest moves in years the Jets have made. Now we got to see if it pans out. Darnold will have all the time he needs to develop into the quarterback I think everybody thinks he can become. And I'm really hoping Sam Darnold can make it. I really hope he does. We will see, folks. Second round of the draft is coming up tonight. NFL season is a few more months away by September. We're going to find out which of these top draft picks will make it and have an immediate impact in the NFL. The Education 10, saying so long for now.